On the second batch, we're not going to need quite as much of it, and I can make it just a little thinner. Not a whole lot thin, just a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, only this time it's really going to be spread out thin. I don't want any thick filler anywhere if I can help it. Okay, we're ready for the uh, second wipe down. Uh, also, I went along these edges a second time with uh, the rag and the filler. Remember now, when you do your wipe down of the excess filler, you go across the grain, and then after you get it all pretty much wiped off in one spot, then you can kind of go lightly, very lightly, with the grain. Not very much, very lightly, okay? The second filling of a pastewood filler has dried. It's been a little over 24 hours. And I'm going to give it one more very, very, very light sanding once more with 800 grit paper. Alright, I only took maybe 45 seconds to do that. Just We want a nice smooth top and it's feeling really nice right now. Now keep in mind, I, I'm, I'm going to repeat it, I am not a professional and most hobbyists aren't. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on some Minwax pre-stain treatment. I'm just going to take an old foam rubber brush and just put it on. And you don't have to worry about what direction to go in. This stuff is very thin, acts as a sealer, and it, you have two hours after it's put on to put your stain on. Yeah, if you wait longer than that, it's too late. So I'll, use, I'll just brush it on in, let it soak for, you know, five or ten minutes, and then you're supposed to wipe up any extra, but normally there is no extra. It's so thin that it soaks right in. Pre-stain treatment. It, it enables you to stain your wood, and it prevents blotchiness. I really, really like this stuff. A can will last you forever. I've used it for a long time. Okay, you can see that this stuff is very thin. Very thin. Now we're just going to stick our old brush in there. We're just going to start putting it on there. Now, there, I, you know, I have actually done radios where I put this pre-stain treatment on and let the pre-stain treatment dry completely and then just put my clear finish right over the top. And that works very nicely also, trust me. It is time uh, for the wipe down of the excess uh, pre-stain treatment after 15 minutes. Go ahead and wipe it all down. Wipe down all the excess you can find. Just lightly wipe it. The stain I've chosen, and I use it on almost all my radios, is uh, Gunstock. It's a fairly new Minwax stain. I really like it. It works really nice on old radios. Uh, it, it's usually a choice between Golden Oak and Gunstock. I'm just going to dip it in. Always use a rag. And then just start applying your stain right on top of the, uh, the pre-stain treatment. Alright, the stain is set for a while. I did a lot of really good rubbing in. Now I'm going to go ahead and just lightly wipe it down and then let it set for 24 more hours. This whole process takes a while, so if you're an impatient kind of person, let someone else do it. The next step is to put this dark. You'll remember that this, this uh, little uh, band here all the way around the radio is dark. And we're about to make that dark again. And here's what we're going to use to do it with. It's Mohawk Toner. It's not a paint, it's a lacquer toner. It's also not a dye. And we're going to use extra dark walnut. When applying your tape uh, to your paper, or in this case your paper to the tape, uh, on these old radios, uh, don't use a whole, don't have a whole lot of blue tape overlap. You only need just enough to catch the wood to tape it off. Now toner is not a paint. You just don't, you know, you just don't spray it like paint. It's misted on. In this case, I'm looking for a very dark stripe, and it'll take two or three applications, maybe four, before I get it the way I want it. Always spray off to the side first to clear your nozzle. That's all I'm doing. It's, it's, it's just a, a mist from a distance. Come over here. 
and then we'll let that set and dry. Lacquer dries very quickly. All right, the second coat uh, has been applied, and you can see that it is slowly darkening up. And we'll let that dry, and then we'll go with the third coat. All right, this is after four uh, light coats. What I'm going to do is go over it one more time with a fine tooth comb and probably put one very, very thin coat on it and then go ahead and let her dry and peel the paper off and see what she looks like. All right, I do believe that'll do it. So let's see if we can maybe peel a, a little bit off of here and see what we got. Now when you peel, you peel toward the center. You peel toward the center here, you peel toward the center here, you peel toward the center. Always toward the center. And when we peel the bottom off, we're going to pull downward. Always downward, downward. You don't want to be lifting it up across the uh, area you just toned. Well, so far so good. You keep pulling toward the center. Toward the center. Always away from the area you just painted. Now there again, it's not going to be a thousand percent perfect, but it's going to be much better than it was. What we got here? Go slow. If you get a little snag, go slow till you figure out what it is. Okay, there might have. It looks like there might have been a little bit of the toner got in underneath the uh, underneath the paper, but we'll take care of that. I just put a, a dab of uh, lacquer thinner on the end of this rag right here and I've almost allowed it to evaporate completely and my fingers on the inside so I can tell pretty much how dry it is I'm gonna blow on it a little bit to just about get it to dry and then I'm gonna take it and very lightly go back and forth with my finger here and rub that overspray out and it should pretty much disappear there it goes it's almost gone okay now what we've got to do is try to get this light colored area out of the wood it's a shame it's there but you know you got to deal with it and of course we're going to use another toner but this time we're going to use perfect brown perfect brown is is almost the universal color for any kind of wood similar to this shade to this color now it will darken up the wood just a tad and I'm going to try not to have to do the entire top but I'll be misting it on from a distance and try to get at least some kind of uniformity to where this light spot, you know, is, I, I don't think I'm going to get it all out, but it'll be a lot better than what it is right now. At least, that's what I hope. All right, once again, spray off to the side to make sure your nozzle's clear, otherwise you might get splotches. You don't want that to happen. And just kind of mist from a distance, mist from a distance. So you can do mist from a distance. Now there's where we put our patch in. Now this is why this is why I had to put the dark on first. Any of this uh, perfect brown that might get along the edge on the dark will not be seen. But the other way around would be different. Now we're going to go ahead and spray the front edge. Kind of try to get that to tone up equally. From a distance, a little bit at a time. And over here. Well, that's the best I can do on that toner. If I continue to apply too much, it'll get very dark, and I, and I don't want to do that. Uh, tomorrow, we'll finish this thing up. I might add just a touch more toner in the front, and maybe a little bit back there to try to give it a more uniform tone but you know it, 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 it we've reached a point of diminishing returns on it it just looks really nice the way it is I think if we back up and take a look at the bottom which is original and then we come up here to the top it's a little bit darker on the top but I think once they the owner refinishes the bottom it'll match up really nice well I'm happy to say it's the next morning and, it, and boy I'll tell you the sun's out, it's nice and shiny and the, and the temperature's perfect and I, I don't feel any moisture in the air which is always nice when you have to spray lacquer. What you see in this package here is what's called a tack cloth. I'll remove it here in a few minutes. It's a piece of cheese cloth basically and it's impregnated with a sticky kind of stuff they put on it. I don't know what it's called 
but it has the same stickiness as about what you would find on one of these post-it notes. Not really sticky, but you know, not really dry either. And the purpose of the tack cloth is to remove any dust, any sanding dust, any anything that may have accumulated on the surface that you're getting ready to spray before you spray it. It, it, it gets that last, you know, it's that last second wipe down. But uh, don't wipe very, very hard with it because if you really press down hard with it, some of the stickiness on the on the uh, on the cloth will come off. I've had that happen. And then when you spray, of course, it does not stick where the sticking it, the sticky stuff. And uh, I pressed way too hard. So it's just a gentle light wipe down, especially after you've done a light sanding. And, and you'll see that before we're done here. The lacquer spray clear finish I'll be using is Watco. I, I really like Watco. Uh, I went to my uh, super duper friendly uh, neighborhood hardware store and I said, hey guys, can you order me some Watco? And they looked in their computer and sure enough, they could. So they just order it as I need it. It comes in gloss, semi-gloss, and satin, of course. I've decided for this radio uh, top finish, I, th I think we'll go with semi-gloss. Satin would be a little bit too dull, and that's probably what they're going to go with the owner when he decides to refinish the rest of the radio. But just in case there is a little moisture in the air today, and some of the uh, spray clear finish decides to turn a little cloudy, uh, I do have my no blush uh, retarder with me, which will remove uh, that blush. So let's get started. Each of those pouches, by the way, that you get at Lowe's or Home Depot or your hardware store for tack cloth, they contain two, two cloths, two of these tack cloths. So we're just going to gently wipe down the entire surface with it and around the edges that we're getting ready to spray. And any lint that may have accumulated, any dust or anything, will be picked up by the cloth. Once again, uh, this is lacquer. Uh, clear finish. Uh, do not spray it if the temperature is above 90 degrees or if it's very very uh, moist, if it's moist out, if, there's, uh, if it's rained or there's a lot of heavy moisture in the air. Don't do that. Wait for a dry day. Let's get to it here. While I'm waiting for the uh, first coat to dry uh, I want you to see that I have here 800 grit and 1000 grit a wet dry sandpaper and the only place you're going to be able to probably find this is at an auto parts store I bought this at AutoZone uh, it, hardware stores don't carry it and you know Home Depot and Lowe's because there's not much call for it but there's a lot of call for it at the, uh, auto, at the auto parts stores I thought I'd show you some new knobs I got for this thing unfortunately he was missing a matching knob uh, like this small one I went downtown looked around I, I wound up having to get something a little bit larger because there's just no knobs anywhere close to that looking like this. But you know, I stuck one on down here. It doesn't look all that bad. The second coat is dried, and now I'm going to take 1,000 grit paper. Don't use any more uh, than 1,000 grit paper on your finishes, uh, which is my recommendation. Some people will use 600 or 800 and then work up to 1,000. I guess it all depends on how rough the surface is. At this stage of the game, you should have a fairly smooth surface. So, what I'm going to do is very, very lightly. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on it. And I'm going to stay away from the edges. Don't go near the edges because this stuff will cut through and you'll have a white line right where it cut through. Uh, I'm going to pretty much leave this uh, entire uh, thing alone all the way around. Just let her go. But we're going to go ahead and just very lightly sand the surface. All right, the sanding is complete, and I'm going to wipe off the dust. Very, that was a very, very light sanding. I think the whole thing took about 30 seconds because there weren't that many bumps. Now, after we've wiped it down, now we take the tack cloth one more time. And don't, remember, do not push hard on that tack cloth. Some of that sticky stuff will get on the surface, and we don't want that to happen. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, we've got three coats of semi-gloss lacquer on there. It's not perfect by any means, but you know, I'm one of these guys, I never do anything perfect. So this radio will soon be handed off to the owner, whose name is John, and I understand he and his uh, daughter uh, will finish uh, the rest of the cabinet. Uh, apparently, I think that this belonged to his daughter's uh, great-grandmother, I believe it was. 
And uh, But if they don't like what I've already done to the top, it's not a problem. You know, they can strip the veneer off. They can just take the finish off. They can redo it. It's up to them. It's their radio. Uh, the only thing we have left to do is uh, put a light bulb in over the top of the turntable. Uh, I'll open the door over here and screw the light bulb in. The original frosted was blowed out. I could have gotten a whole pack of these things on eBay, but my God, they wanted an arm and a leg for them. So I just bought a couple uh, single items. Uh, uh, one that I'll put in, and I bought him a spare in case it blows out. They're just old 115-volt, uh, 125 125-volt 125 Christmas tree lights is really what they were. Anyway, that's it, and uh, I'm glad you all uh, took the time to hang with me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, I've already started on my next project, a 630B. And as soon as we're done with it, uh, we'll plunge on into another radio. Because I really enjoy uh, having a small part in preserving a piece of our American heritage. Till next time, this is John. I want everybody to see... A brand new toaster. Now, I've been griping to the wife about our toaster for quite a while. A long time, actually, because only uh, one side of the bread toasted well. The other one always turned out dark black and burnt half the time. I got so fed up with that thing. Well, I've got a, I've got a uh, birthday coming up here in the not-too-distant future. And wifey, she bought me a brand new toaster for my birthday. Thank you, honey. <laughs>